Uh, Steve asked me to come and say a few words, and it'll be a few. Uh, I want to thank Steve first uh, for encouraging me. It's been about five years since I've been uh, planting chinkapin trees, and he's helped me all along the way. And uh, mostly what I have is, is practical, and I'm not uh, too know. I found out a lot today about the genetics and the nutritional value. If I can, do you care if I say a little something about, about you and what I've observed, everything you're kind of I'm pretty in. wonderful, but you go okay. ahead. He's also <laughs> modest. Uh, <laughs> well, Andy has been a member for about five years, and um, uh, we talked about him coming up. He moved last year, so we kind of missed it. And it's good to get the feedback about all those uh, members, over a thousand members out there that we send seed to. And uh, probably about a fourth of them right now, I'd say, are probably people we just grandfathered in. Uh, we just gave seed to. It could be like the Cherokee Nation. It could be like somebody that's doing work with us. And, uh, you know, that's kind of the way I did it. I'm like, you know what, your efforts, patient membership, don't worry about it. Uh, so we're about a, a, a thousand plus. And, um, and it's unique because I've been sending him seed, and he's been uh, calling me back, email me, tell me how the seed are doing, and that sort of thing. And uh, so I'm really glad to have him up here because this is a, a member that's been with us for around five years, and he's going to share with us his experience and what he's learned uh, about planting these out in the field and what's happened with it. So I just want to be sure we got All that right. in there. If that sounds okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you. Gives me a good outline. There you go. Uh, Steve said, I've been uh, planting seeds for five years. At this point, I started out with two seeds of all he would uh, release. I think that was for two years running. Anyway, we'll get, there are only so many seeds to go around. So I had pretty good success. And, and at this point, I had 34 trees from this size to eight feet, maybe. Last year, I had my first crop. And this spring, I planted my first set of nuts from my own so, uh, this next, uh, what I do to, this is some of my experience with taking care of the seeds, which is pretty important. I put them in the plastic bag with sphagnum moss. Wednesday and Sunday, I open it up and blow into the bag, as Steve suggests. I've never had any problem then with mold or any of that. The only disaster I've had with the refrigeration when I had a malfunction in the uh, refrigerator and it froze a whole bag of them, ruined them. Other than that, I've had good luck. And even this last year, we went on a six-month vacation. Six I brought weeks. my seeds with me in a igloo cooler every Wednesday and Sunday to get the treatment. And of course, iced them down along the way. I had brought them back home put them in the refrigerator, and they froze. So that was pretty irritating. But you can travel with chicken pin seeds successfully. It's kind of like kids, you have to watch them. So another, I have a suggestion about planting. I started out, I take a, take a mattock and dig up, I've got a rocky place, dig it up with parsley, pull all the rocks out of it, scalp the grass back about this far, well, of course, with two seeds, you know and I carefully plant that in there. That worked fine, I got 100% germination, but when you get more seeds, I, I'm retired, so I didn't want to work that hard. Finally, this last year, I took a punching bar. Any of you live on a farm, you know what a punching bar is, an old axle, about this tall, heavy, sharp on one end, and uh, you punch it down like so, and then drive your fence post in. Well, I found I could take that bar and just drive it as far as you can, rotate it, drive it, rotate it. Well, I'll probably get down maybe that far. Then I took a quarter inch uh, hardware cloth and I had some gravel around there that pour con used to pour concrete with, sandy gravel. Pour that through this screen, makes just the perfect size. And when you have the seed that sprouted about this far, I found it's very difficult to get that out of the sphagnum moss, carry it around, stick it in the ground, try to put the dirt around it. So, and so here you can just hold the seed by the top. You can take a handful of First you just go like this, you can fill your hole up all the way up to the top. Then you put your seed in there and you can just sprinkle that around. It just doesn't hurt the 
rootlet, a tiny little tip or anything, pour a cup of water on it or half a cup just to settle it down, put your tube on it, and I've had very good success with that, like 90 some percent termination. And this is the first year I've tried that, so I don't know whether what they are. They're, they were planted early this spring, they're up about 16 inches at this point. So, and the ones I planted last year, I find most of them come out of the tube. Well, half of them come out of the tube in the first year on my place. And then there's some, I've had some that linger around down the bottom of the tube, two or three leaves for three or four years, and suddenly up they come. So they do vary. And my best success was the second uh, seed I planted shot out of the four-foot tube the first year that far. I was pretty impressed with that. And the next year, uh, it was girdled down in the tube by some kind of bore and uh, just cut it off. And uh, since then, it has regenerated, but that kind of nipped it in the below the bud. You know. So that's pretty much all I have for to share today. I've enjoyed today's meeting a lot. So I'll be. I can think of the more scientific aspects while I'm punching. <laughs> Thank you. What, 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 you know, the, the size of the cloth you use again to sort your gravel? What kind of gravel? It's a quarter inch uh, mesh. Hardware cloth you get at the hardware store, the lumber yard. It's a quarter inch mesh. You take a pretty sandy gravel, the stuff they use for concrete is a good example. It's got a lot of sand in it. You just sift it through there. I just take a square of it and bend the corners up and make a shovel through there. It makes it boy, just the perfect size because there are no big rocks in it. It's got a lot of sand. And it'll fill that hole that you make with a punching bar right to the bottom. And uh, it just makes a perfect uh, element for the root to go down through, or they seem to do very well in that. I've done something similar in another power every single year. But I use the post hole digger. Post hole digger. Got, got it. Well, I had a two inch uh, PVC pipe to put in there. Fill that with, this, with my sand mixture, backfill with my, uh, my soil material. Then when I removed the PVC pipe, I had a two inch diameter column. Oh, that's a nice sand. Yeah. What kind of post hole digger, though? Just the three point point or the two point? Regular auger. It was on the back of the uh, tractor. Yeah. My regular auger's a two point, you know, two handle. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, whatever. I mean, yeah. If you, if you have more of a, if you have a heavier clay soil. Oh, that would work nicely. That's the, that's the whole purpose, right? Or to get the, uh, that, get that, down through that it. super drainage material through there. Yeah. So if I use it a PVC pipe in there, and you can backfill. And when you remove the PVC pipe, you got a two inch column of uh, sand. Yeah, that would work very well. Yes. Where do you get tubes? Grow tubes. The grow tubes are hard to find. I get them. Ones I've gotten are through uh, Forestry Supply, Janie's at the name of it, and uh, they're expensive. I yes. have used, uh, lately I've used these blue poly, some kind of plastic, polyethylene, what do you call it? They come with black. Let me think how they work. You get, you get a sleeve, a blue plastic sleeve, thin, and then you get these uh, mylar rectangles. And you just stick them in the sleeve, and they expand, and you've got a nice four, four inch tube. They're a lot less expensive than the tree tubes, you know. The, which I found the tree tubes are very durable, and, but I've had some of these others, I forget what you call them, they're blue. They're blue, and they have, I guess, the outside, it, it's a thin plastic. It's like a, plastic, a cylindrical plastic bag, and you just roll that mylar piece up, stuff it down in there, and it expands you've got it. And I take a, I use a rebar to tie them to. Well, that's something else I found on the nice grow, good grow, expensive grow tubes, they've got a strap that holds them on there. And if you look down in there and you see a bunch of weeds, you can undo the ties and pull that off, pull the weeds out. And when you use a cheap guys method with a piece of rebar and a cheap tube, you look down in there and see, you know, a bunch of weeds and one poor old chicken bin leaf sticking up. You can't get in there. 
you can take a vice grip, clamp it on your rebar, take a hammer and tap it up so you raise your tube up about two inches, then you can painfully, as depending on your age, get down on your hands and knees and you can see under there and pull the weeds out and just tap it back down. That's just a hint if you use that. But we're kind of a low budget deal, so I'm using those blue ones now. Because the time you buy those tubes, they, the shipping costs as much as the tube. This other system, they come in a flat box, a hundred in a box, about like this. And, uh, those grow tubes, they're expensive to ship. They're durable and nice. Uh, anyone else? Thanks very much. Thank you.